Uh, today I'm going to share the Word of God from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and the theme says in his image the word here his represents God in God's image the imago Dei this is a Latin term um, let me show you one image here as my introduction and ask you uh, what do you see there I'll show you a green color picture which has uh, trees and water I'm trying to <laughs> okay so what do you see here in order to clearly see this picture in order to understand the image here uh, we say we have to close 70 to 80 percent of our eyes then the image becomes very visible do you see any face there how many of you see a face Oh yeah, okay, who is he? Ronaldo. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. If you try to close your eyes, you can see a very clear picture of his smile, his face, everything. But you know what? In order to see clearly this image, you need to do some hard work. <laughs> close your eyes and yeah, as I've already told you, 70 to 80%, then you see Cristiano Ronaldo clearly there. I remember previously once I showed you this picture in, in my chapel sermon time. This is a coin, a fourth century coin in Aksumite kingdom. And this coin is also regarded as the first Christian coin artifact that contains the Christian symbol. What Christian symbol do you see here? On the top here, there is a cross, actually. And the emperor's image also is on the coin. Not only ancient time, actually, modern time also, different countries use different images on their uh, money bill, currencies. Say, for example, in the United States, here, one dollar bill, it has the image of George Washington, the first president of the United States. Second, uh, you see here, two dollars bill, Thomas Jefferson, I think he is the third president. Abraham Lincoln, do you know? He's, uh, what, first or second or third? Uh-huh. 16th, thank you. 16th president, very famous as you know. We all read his biography and learn almost every day. Alexander Hamilton, well, he is not a president. He is one of the non-president image on the dollar bills. Uh, he was an uh, army general. Andrew Jackson, I think he, he was uh, the seventh president. Ulysses Grant, 18th president. Benjamin Franklin, the other non-president image on the American dollar bill. He is a scientist, philanthropist. He is also a politician, businessman. He has a lot of professions. And every time we use this dollar, we remember what they have done for their country. Especially as Americans, people when they use these bills, they remember their contributions to their country. Positive contributions they have as founding fathers of the country. What image do you see in yourself? Sometimes people have a very much exaggerated self-image and sometimes to the contrary people have a very much reduced self-image, sometimes negative self-image. When we look to ourselves, <laughs> the picture here is a cat but when the cat looks to itself in the mirror the imagination it considers himself as a lion it's not too bad i know we need to have this kind of perspective about ourselves but it needs to be also realistic and sometimes to the opposite as i've already mentioned to you we have this negative self-image where we reduce ourselves to almost nothing we say I failed in the past, therefore I'm not going to make it now, I can't do this, or I'm so much stressed out, and the, the, the list of the vocabularies are 
countless. We have so many different kinds of expressions when we burn out, when we are stressed out, and our self-image will be reduced to even sometimes to the point that we will have a negative self-image. Now the question is, how can we have genuine self-imagination about ourselves? According to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, I say we need to go to the original purpose of creation. Genuine self-imagination comes from knowing our true image, the image that we are created with. The imago Dei. God said, uh, I will create human beings, man and woman, in my own image and in my own likeness. Let's read it. One, two, three. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. But it's not that easy to understand this because when the Bible says human beings are created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, what does it mean? Is it physically that we are resembling God? Are we having the image of God in a physical way? Is it biological? Is it ontological? The debates are going on all the time. And, and I brought, I'm not talking debates, but you know, human beings are created in the image of God. We are the image bearers of God. And when we say we have that image in us, it is not referring to the physical aspect of our human personhood. Or it's not even biological. In fact, scientists believe that human beings are very much similar with animals when it comes to biological components. And other people say, when we say we have the image of God in ourselves, they say it is more ontological. And others say, no, it's not physical, biological, or ontological. It is more related with the election of the humankind. It is God who wanted to put his image in us, and it's a matter of election. At least, we can agree, number one, it is not referring to the invisible, uh, it is referring to the invisible image of God. It is not the physical aspect of our human life. It refers to the immaterial part of humanity. Mainly, I brought three things here, but this is not exhaustive list. Because I don't have time and I need to make my sermon very brief, I brought three. What are they? Number one, morality. This is morality. Number two, spirituality. And the third one, intellectual nature or the quality of being intelligent. The image of God sets human beings apart from the, the animal kingdom. What makes us different mainly from the animal kingdom or other creatures is that we are the image bearers of God's image. What does it mean? At least I have seven things that can be represented as the image of God in us. Let's read it all together. Number one, goodness. Two, love. Three, mercy and forgiveness. Four, justice, being just. Five, compassion. Six, holiness. And seven, graciousness. No other creature can have these as human beings have. That's why we say we are created in the image of God. God has created us in his own image and likeness. Let me ask one question here about each of them. How can we practice goodness? Okay, we say God has shared his goodness to us. We are the image bearer of God, therefore we share, we connect the goodness of God. But the question is, how can we practice goodness? At least we need to have the spirit of gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation, looking into every aspect of our life and be full of gratitude to God 
and other human beings and even other creatures for all the resources that we share and everything. And then we need to have this positive mental attitude. It is not possible to practice goodness without we have this positive mental attitude, PMA. It is a, a habit. It is something that we can develop in ourselves. It is a practice. At the end, we will be able to live or perform goodness, which is also the attribute of God. We need to maintain relationship both with God and with others, social relationship, or even with um, the environment and all creatures. Practice loving God and others, then when we have these qualities in our life, we will be able to connect with the goodness of God, which is one aspect of the image that is in us. Number two, how can we practice love? We say love is one of the image of God. Love is the attribute of God. Um, we say communicable attribute that God has shared with human beings. How can we practice that? I say number one here, we need to pay attention. Pay attention to people. Pay attention to the gift of God. When we are able to see the depth of every resources that we have, the gifts that the Lord has given us. So love starts from paying the proper attention to others, to ourselves, to every opportunities given from our God. And then not only give attention, but also have the willingness to share. Share our emotions, our feelings, our love, resources that we, we possess and everything we share. Because you can't, um, what is that? You can't love without giving, but you can give without loving. Therefore, our love needs to be manifested by sharing resources, willingness to sacrifice. This is another level or manifestation of God. Jesus Christ, the agape of God, when he revealed the love of God to us, we know how he sacrificed on the cross. Therefore, if we say we bear the image of God in us, we, we need to have this willingness of sacrificing. We sacrifice our emotion, we sacrifice our resources, we sacrifice everything for the sake of love. And then we need to have this open mind, open heart to learn, understand others, um, to, to appreciate other cultures, other languages, and everything which is not us then we will have that open mind and open heart and that is also the manifestation of love and then the last one feel we say we put ourselves in other shoes especially understanding trying to feel others is not easy as we are always contained by our emotions but if we want to practice love as one image of god in our life and change the quality of our life we needed to practice this all next how can we practice mercy? We need to have a forgiving heart, especially forgiving those who hurt us. Sometimes when we pray, it is easy for us to say that in general, I forgive everybody. But when it comes to particular, whenever there is emotion involved, it is not easy. But we need to develop that forgiving heart. The thing is like we need to progress every day. We need to be better today than yesterday. And we still have the hope to be better tomorrow than today. And, and then we need to develop uh, the virtue of uh, patience. Because without we having patience, we cannot be merciful. Have forgiving heart. Develop the attitude of patience. Be good to others and to yourself. And treat compassionately. In fact, Compassion comes as another uh, element of the image of God. Number four, how can we practice justice? This is a big question. What is morality? How do we understand? What is the right thing to do? How do we define justice? And we say justice is uh, the manifestation of the image of God. It is a communicated attribute of the Lord. Then the question is, how do we practice I say one here, continue investigating because I, I, I believe that we still have a long way to correctly define the word justice, correctly to understand. 
Therefore, we need to have a continuous investigation, questioning, asking, studying, looking into different matters of the society in the community, the global community. This should be an ongoing process of helping ourselves to understand the concept of justice and practice properly in our community. Then we need to have a positive action in the community where we belong to. Positive action related to justice or morality. Be kind, understanding, and be compassionate. Then you will be able to have a better concept of justice and also to practice justice in our practical life. And then the, number five, how can we practice compassion? Both Compassion it involves both feeling and action. And then, when, when we say it's action, it's an act of kindness. It's an act of encouraging others, especially, quote-unquote, those who are known as weak or underprivileged, those who are in different kinds of need. In fact, every human being needs words of encouragement and words of kindness. If we want to have compassion in our heart, it needs to be manifested both in act of kindness and encouraging others. Number six, how can we practice holiness? The, the literal definition of the word holiness or being holy is being separate or set apart. And when we say set apart, I brought here three prepositions, set apart from, set apart by, and set apart to. The word from refers to being separated or set apart from the world, from the world system, from sin, from evil, and then by God, by the Spirit of God, by the message of the gospel, and to the kingdom of God, to the ministry that we are called, to the service, the service that the Lord has given us. Live in a way, uh, live in a way our life reflects the glory of God then we will be able to practice holiness. And finally, how can we be gracious to others? This is another question. Because graciousness is the image of God found in human beings. Offer others kind words and gesture. This is being gracious. When uh, we are using words, we need to be able to choose gracious words and know the manner of delivering that graciousness to others. And then, of course, gestures too. I cannot explain because I don't have time here. Give others a generous attention and treating others with dig dignity. You know, dignity for human beings and dignity for other uh, creatures too. Everyone can be respectful when they feel like they are respected because God has created all human beings with dignity. As my conclusion, I say our responses today should be, number one, we need to value the image of God which is in us. It starts from valuing it. Two, we need to embrace it. After we give the proper value for the image of God, then we need to have the willingness to embrace it in our life. Then we confirm. Confirm means the life that we are having here needs to be confirmed to God because that is the prototype. The image that God has put to us is the true identity, the original, authentic uh, um, identity given from God to us. Therefore, we need to cross-refer with that uh, original vision of God, purpose of God, and confirm the image of God. And finally... If we find that we are doing good in terms of confirming our life with the image of God, then the last one will be maintain that. Until we enter in fullness to the kingdom of God, we needed to maintain the image of God. May God help us all and let us pray.